Let's uh, start with uh, Jacob Rayburn. Jacob, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, there. Yeah, hope you're doing well. I uh, I'm wondering, kind of uh, similar to what we talked with Lance about, um, where do you think you got your guys are right now as they head into camp on Friday? What have you been able to measure in terms of their progress when it's been mostly Zoom work uh, of late? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a a few months now of kind of classroom only work for us, you know, which is a change for us football coaches. We're, we're, we kind of get into a rhythm of uh, being in the classroom and then going out to the grass and, and troubleshooting it with the guys or, or applying it rather. Um, and so it has been interesting. We've got a lot of good, really good film time and teaching this this offense and our system and time as coaches to go back and you know look at last year, but also just evaluate our scheme and. Um, it, it's been, it's been, uh, different for sure. Uh, but you know, I'm excited about just, uh, you know, where the guys are mentally right now and now they get a chance to go do it on the field and we get a chance to go do it with them on the field. <clears throat> Next question will be from Daniel Martinez cramps. Daniel, uh, go ahead. Hi coach. Thank you so much for your time. So I'm writing a little thing on Davis and, uh, I talked to coach Ballard his coach back in Georgia last week. And he mentioned kind of the first time that he really put Davis in your radar Sounds like he was bringing Logan Bird by for a visit. And then he kind of pitched you on Davis back when he was in the ninth grade. And you're a little bit surprised by that. So I just want to ask if you your memory of that conversation and then um, kind of reflecting back on it with Davis now as a starter. Yeah, you know, looking back on Davis's uh, recruitment, obviously talked to some different people in his in his uh, life, his corner, um, you know, have a great relationship with his high school coach as well. So I'd heard about him from a couple different people. Um, and, and he was one that we just, you know, being across the country, just kind of heard little tidbits about. And I had the opportunity, uh, let's see, the spring before his junior year um, to go see him in spring ball. Um, and, you know, obviously liked what I saw. And so actually we had him to camp that following summer um, and, and he shined at camp. I mean, we, we fell in love with him, you know. And so, uh, you know, he's come a long way. Obviously, he's had some uh, adversity since he's been here. Um, you know, with his health and whatnot. Um, and I'm excited for him to be, you know, going into the season uh, in the position he's in. I'm really excited for him, excited to work with him. And he's, uh, you know, he's got, a, he's got a chance to uh, really perform really well this year with the work that he's put in. If I could follow up on that really briefly, just yeah. it seems that he's so poised and calm. And this is going to be <clears> an obviously very hectic year. The schedule's on, the schedule's off. It's back on now. But having someone like that leading the charge, how do you think that will play out this season? Well, I'll put it this way, you know, we uh, sometimes I have to encourage Davis that it's OK uh, to show a bit of little, a little bit of emotion. <laughs> you know, he's uh, he's so even keeled. And I think that helps him so much as a quarterback, um, because I think more often than not, it's easy to get caught up in those emotional tides that can that can come along in a game. Um, and so Davis, I mean, he is he is as steady as they come, you know, and I, I know his teammates really look to him as a guy who is that steady source of, uh, of energy. Um, and so, again, he, he's really grown a lot and continued to mature as a leader. And I'm excited for him, not only from the football physical side of things, but also, um, you know, in his ability to, to lead this team. Thank you so much. Yeah. Next question will come from Rusty Simmons with the San Francisco Chronicle. Yeah, Coach, thanks for doing this this afternoon. Um, and I'll stay on the, the Davis Mills bandwagon here for a second. Um, what are your ex expectations for him this year? Expectations for him this year. Uh, take the next step as a leader at the helm of our offense and, and really as our program, you, know, uh, you know, really as a leader in our program. Um, and then, you know, take the next step uh, in our offense, in our system. I think it's no secret, you know, that we run a pro style system that he's got a lot of control at the line of scrimmage um and so i'm i'm looking for him to utilize that control and you know i mean he's like i said we, uh, you know jacob asked the question we've gotten a lot of classroom time a lot of time for him to really delve into the offense um and learn the ins and uh excuse me the ins and outs um and so it's, and we're excited for him to go out there and apply that on the field you know he's got um you know great talent around him and 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 you know my expectation is that he's going to go take advantage of all the work that he's put in, in the offseason and my follow-up might might link back to some of that a little bit. Um, 
how creative have you had to be during this time um, when we don't know exactly what the protocols of the state and the county are and we, we, we don't know how many people you're allowed to have in pods and when you're be, be allowed to be on the field. Um, I imagine that's taking a, a lot of creativity to, to get work done. Can you give me any insight on that? Sure. I mean, I, you, you really kind of summed it up in your question. You know, we're having to be creative. I think, I think you know, to the extent that they let us do uh, things related to football, we're going to take full advantage of, you know. And so we've had, had a couple of workouts that have been socially distant, um, and we've done as much as we can while staying, uh, you know, within the letter of the law that our uh, university, county, and state have outlined for us. And so um, we continue to try to work with them and, and, and uh, you know, stay at that, at that edge of what we're allowed to do. Um, and then we'll, we'll continue to work with them and, and, you know, in this, in this coming up period of, you know, supposedly starting practice on Friday. And so I know some stuff's got to get worked out, but um, yeah, we, we've had some creative uh, things that we've done in the past months, you know, be it on zoom or uh, you know, the, the, the workouts that we've been able to do. Um, but I think that's the theme of 2020. I imagine in you all's profession, you've had to do the same. And so we're, uh, we're right along with you guys. Next question will be from Troy Clarity with the TreeCast. Samita, good to see you. Uh, two things, uh, if I can. Number one, let's start here. Um, what's your initial read on what this offense's big strength is and how it could potentially uh, be reflected in some things we see on the field? Um, you know what? Uh, I think the strength uh, is, you know, I, I caught a little bit of the question that you guys asked Lance, um, you know, just about how some, some guys having to play last year, you know, and, and especially early in their careers. Um, you know, we had, it's well documented, some of the injuries that we had last year and, and young guys that we had playing. Um, I would say the strength is that we have a lot of guys with a lot of experience. You know, we have some depth around here that we haven't had for a while. And, and while we haven't been able to be on the field for a while, um, that also means that guys have been able to get healthy to a large degree. And so um, I think the strength is that, that we have uh, a lot of talented guys who have been working really hard in the off season, um, you know, both kind of at their, at their respective places physically, but also mentally on in our zoom meetings and the other things we've talked about. Um, and so I, if anything, I would say our strength is, uh, you know, the fact that, that we feel like we're, we, we're going to have a good group of guys and not just starters that are going to be able to contribute on this football team and on this offense specifically. All right, second thing, obviously no fans at any of the Pac-12 venues up and down the conference. You guys have plane rides to Eugene and Seattle. What could possibly change when you head to hostile environments like that? But the, the big thing that makes them hostile is kind of removed. Yeah, Troy, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be right with you, and it's going to be eerie walking in some of those places. You know, having grown up in the Northwest myself, uh, grew well accustomed to, to, you know, Husky Stadium and Autzen, um, and knowing both the reputation of those places by experience and just from hearing about them, um, it's, it's, it's going to be strange, you know, but uh, I think it's uh, just, just another one of those challenges that we talked about that's going to be unique to this season, um, and our guys are ready. You know, we've talked a lot about adapting. And, uh, you know, whether that's the environments that we're going to play in, uh, the practices that we're going to have, the travel arrangements or the protocols that we're going to have to do between testing and all these different things. I mean, the, the, the theme, one theme for our guys in, in this current season is adapt, you know, and, and, and it's one thing that I know our guys are, are well aware of. And that's not just for our players, right? I mean, that's certainly for our staff as well. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Thank Next question uh, from RJ Abadia with the bootleg. Hey coach, um, the last time we talked, you predicted that there might be some changes in terms of quarterback recruiting in the 22 class and there have been some changes. I'm just curious as you're looking at a dead period that now extends through the calendar year, how are you negotiating the process of, of quarterback recruiting in terms of when you think you're going to know you have your guy out of the ones you've offered and, and when you'd want them to feel comfortable committing to you guys at this point. Um, I had to cringe there when you said I predicted something, because I was kind of waiting to hear what the next thing was out of your mouth there, RJ. Uh, you know what? I, I think, I think, 
like with a lot of these answers, I mean, this is just so un, uncharted territory for a lot of us that I, I really, I don't have strong expectations. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm to a large degree, I'm going with the flow a little bit. And, uh, you know, we're excited about, you know, some guys that we've identified um, that we believe can be, uh, that can play here. And so I think that's what I'm most excited about. But, you know, beyond that, with just all the uncertainty surrounding the dead period and, you know, just, just what's going to be going on with re visits and recruiting and even us getting on the road. Uh, I don't have a big expectation other than, than we want to continue to build relationships with all of our recruits and certainly our quarterbacks um, and, 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 and keep identifying, you know, maybe who are those ones that uh, maybe are close to committing or, or, or going to be the guy in this class. And then just a quick follow-up, would it be safe to say that you guys would want to do everything you could to see these guys live before you took a commitment from somebody? Um, not necessarily, not necessarily, you know, I mean, this, this has been, this has been, uh, just kind of a different cycle for us in general. And, and so, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, uh, there are any kind of preconceived notions or policies, you know, regarding, uh, recruiting at large, but, but, you know, the quarterback recruiting as well, just cause again, who knows when, you know, when this is, when, uh, everything's going to open back up. And so I think we have to stay very flexible in that way. Thank you, coach. Yeah, you got it. Time for uh, three last ones. I see three hands. So we'll go uh, Scott Reese, Jacob Rayburn, and finish with Rusty Simmons. Um, Scott, go ahead. Hey, Tavita, good to see you. You too, man. So uh, since we're talking about quarterbacks, um, you've got a pretty full quarterback room, which is obviously a good thing. Um, may as well ask you about Tanner, since I'm sure you're going to get the question a lot over the next few weeks. I'm just wondering... Uh, where is he physically coming off the mission and mentally having, I guess, a little extra time for a freshman, given that it's going to be November and not August, September that we're playing football. Uh, just curious as to your thoughts on, on how close to ready to actually play he is, you know, coming off the two-year mission. And I got to say, having not gone through, you know, we've had, we've had a lot of history with uh, players at Stanford coming off of missions and um, we just haven't done it with a quarterback. And, and so I have to say, I mean, I've been uh, really pleased with with where Tanner is. You know, I think there were probably I think he was probably hiding some American football players down there in Brazil <laughs> when he was uh, when he was on his mission. Uh, but he's he's come back in great shape. Uh, he's throwing the heck out of the ball, you know, and, and um, you know, those those uh, socially distant workouts that I was referring to. I mean, I hesitate to say he hasn't missed a beat because I haven't seen him with pads on with 21 other guys out on the field. Um, but he certainly looks uh, sharp and I'm excited to see him. And so when you talk about his level of readiness, uh, to your point, I mean, he, he's gotten more time, um, you know, just with all the Zoom meetings going on and whatnot uh, that, you know, he wouldn't have gotten otherwise, you know, even just being in a normal freshman cycle. And so that's been good. You know, he's been able to get a lot of mental work uh, that, that have been different some, than some of our other incoming freshmen in recent years. Uh, the thing that that still remains to be seen is what I said a second ago, which is you put 21 other guys out there and that's what he hasn't been able to recreate. Right. Even in Brazil, even when he got back and was able to start working out. But that actually, you know, you can't underestimate playing actual football. And that's why, you know, these evaluations, you know, whether it's seven on seven or camps, uh, we all we always you know want to see him playing games. And we always tell him that's that's what's most important. So for Tanner, I'm excited to, for him to get back out there as I am all of our guys. Uh, next question from Jacob Rayburn. Jacob, go ahead. So with the uh, understanding that we've already talked about, that it's, it's a bit tough to evaluate, you know, the physical work of these guys, you're replacing um, Walker Little, although at the same time, you kind of already had to last year. Um, who do you expect to push Walter who I expect has a bit of a lead right now for a left tackle. Who do you expect to push Walter at that spot? Yeah, that's, you know, that's a good question. And that's something that obviously I think, I think early contenders and just guys who you saw last year who were, um, you know, guys that played some tackle for us, obviously uh, Barrett Miller and Jake Hornerbrook both filled in at tackle at different times. Uh, and so they have the ability to uh, provide depth at that position. Um, you know, and then obviously my, my next thought is, uh, you know, our freshmen, our guys who are going to be here, who we still have to see, like, like Tanner, play live football with pads on. Um, uh, you know, Miles Hinton, 
uh, Pogo, um, Connor McLaughlin. And so those are all guys that we have to kind of see where they are, you know, but if you think back to a year ago, I would have had the same answer about Walter Rouse, uh, you know, not thinking that he was going to go start in his first game down at the Coliseum, you know, and he, he filled in admirably for 11 games. And so I think, I think, um, you know, when you think about depth, I mean, we are very open to any of those freshmen pushing for uh, uh, playing time and, and providing depth behind Walter. Um, but really, you know, I mean, this is a, we're going to have more competition in the offensive line room uh, than we've had in a while. And that's something that's exciting for us, uh, you know, because of, uh, iron sharpens iron. It makes us all better. And we're excited for the competition that's going to be had, um, not just for those starting spots, but, but, you know, you guys are no, you guys know when we have depth, we like bringing in extra guys too. And, um, and so we're going to have fun competition there. We're going to have guys ready to play and we're excited to, to get to work. We'll go to uh, Rusty Simmons to finish. Oh, so much pressure for the last question. Oh, man, um, don't, don't lose it. <laughs> that's right. This might be unfair, but when you're playing a seven-game season, have you even given any thought into can anybody in the Pac-12, can you guys yourself get into the college playoff system? Can I go into my coachisms box and just say yeah, we're going to yeah. take one game, at, one game at a yes, time? Yes, yes. Okay? Uh, you know what? I mean, I think when you look across the landscape of college football, this there, there's just there's so much change and there's so much volatility with. I mean, I said college football, but football, the football war, the football world. I mean, you're seeing it in the NFL, right? And and so I think uh, for me to sit here and 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 predict if we're going to be able to get in, because what you're talking about is you know the discrepancy in games possibly. You know, but I mean, I think I think you got to ask me in uh, five, six weeks when, you know, we have a better idea of what some of those 10 game schedules look like. And, and you know, are all those games being played? So uh, I, all I know is that if if we win our conference, um, which is our goal every year, uh, then we're certainly going to be in the conversation. And that's uh, you know, that's that's really what I'm going to ask for. And, and, and that's and what I'm going to push for. And so, you know, that's what's right in front of us. We preach with our guys all the time. This goes back to my coachisms. But shoot, I'll let the uh, I'll let the other people worry about that, and and uh, you know I'll work I'll worry about scoring a bunch of points. It, it is it even on your register that us in the media voted you guys to finish fourth in the north? I had no idea. <laughs> That's what I figured. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Thanks, Tavita. Uh, we'll send out the audio and video here shortly. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great one.